Perfect. So it's one o'clock, so I guess we'll get started. Um, I want to thank you for coming to my talk on uh, using Windows PowerShell to create scripts that your users actually want to use. We're going to talk about using uh, show command and outgrid view, which are two commands that are available in Windows PowerShell to both capture and present data. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. Did this last time too. I need to apparently click in the right spot. Uh, I am, my name is Corey Knox. I'm a software developer for Chocolatey Software. Prior to Chocolatey, I spent uh, 10 years working for a tire retailer here in Canada on the uh, desk side support team, managing end user computing devices for, so the whole life cycle of operating system deployment, uh, troubleshooting, software install, and uh, finally the recycling of them at the end, using PowerShell uh, all along that process to automate things and make things better. As well as I've been uh, made tools for our service desk uh, to automate things, make their lives easier. My interests lie in programming. I like PowerShell and C-sharp and whatever language happens to be required to fix the weird edge case issues that I'm finding in open source projects. So it's not uncommon for me to find an issue in a project, uh, open an issue for it and submit a pull request in a language that I've never seen before. Uh, just because I have this knack for finding these edge cases. Um, so we, what I want to talk about is, um, we'll start with what's wrong with scripts. And ultimately, I'm sure a lot of us have scripts and modules that we use on a daily basis. And those scripts and modules uh, we use every day we're in the, the terminal, uh, where we know them like the back of our hand. We try to give them to our uh, coworkers and maybe to like tier one support or or what, what have you. And you find out down the road that they're not using them. Well, so first, there's nothing wrong with scripts. Uh, as I said, we all use them. They're great. But it, it's when they're written for ourselves, we is why we're all using them. But the main thing is that the end user doesn't live in the shell. It, whereas I may have three or four PowerShell sessions open at any given time. Someone on the service desk is only going to open PowerShell when, they're, when their process says, you need to go here, open PowerShell, and do this thing in PowerShell. But the other thing about them is they're not, they're not quite as discoverable as, as they could be. Or I, and actually, I'm not sure if they could be more discoverable, but they're not, they're not super discoverable. Uh, we all kind of know get help that can show us uh, information. Get command can also give us more information about it. And we can tab complete. But our end users aren't always going to be doing that. So sometimes it's great to just give them a graphical interface that they can work with. And this is what I did a lot at um, the tire retailer I mentioned is that I wrote I wrote tools and then I put a nice graphical interface in it and asked the service desk to fill in whatever happened to be needed for the process that they'd work on. And those are the tools that actually got used. Uh, one of our server teams uh, gave them gave them scripts to to run because they were they were dealing with Unix servers and. A lot of the times they always, every single time they had to go back to the document about exactly how to run the script. So it, it kind of creates this, this barrier to entry. And so, uh, but one of the things is what, what GUI options are available? Like what, what options do I have? And because PowerShell is a .NET language, you can use the full .NET framework. Uh, you can use C sharp and F sharp and VB.net if you're so inclined. You can also you can use XAML uh, because everyone loves XML, right? Like who wouldn't want to have even more XML 
living in their code. Uh, in particular, the, a lot of the times your, your XAML is going to be inside of a, uh, inside of a, a quoted string. So you're not even going to necessarily have formatting or syntax highlighting. Um, you can also use WinForms. Uh, they're, they're great if you know how to use them. They're also one of the things that is might, might be getting a little long in the tooth. There is a uh, PowerShell module called Show UI, and I've used it in the past. It was one of the first ones that I tried. Uh, but what all of these have in common uh, is that in PowerShell, although it is part of .NET, there's just some little, little things that you occasionally run into. Um, and they're, they're just so occasional enough that you never really figure out the why. Uh, I've used ones where I had one, it was displaying a GUI, it was all nice, and then it would just randomly crash. And you, but, but then you run it again and it wouldn't crash. You give it to someone and it's fine for a couple of weeks and then it crashes on them. Um, and couldn't f kind of figure out the why. But there's features that are built into Windows PowerShell. And I've never experienced those little hiccups with those features. And so that's, that's kind of where I started building around using what's already there uh, because um, one of the reasons that we use that option is that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to come up with what the form looks like every single time or, or why not. You don't need to make the design decisions of how do you present that it's a, it's a um, on or off, uh, like a switch statement or that there are multiple options, but you can only specify certain ones. Maybe you don't have to decide which ones, how to show like what's required. And uh, a big one is that it's already included in Windows PowerShell. So you don't have to install any software. You don't have to compile anything. You don't have to add uh, requirements that you then have to keep up to date because it's already there in the box. And it's there between for like from Windows 7 right up to Windows 11. And I'm sure Windows XP, I think, even has it. But uh, if you're running Windows XP, uh, you should stop that. <laughs> and um, have I mentioned that uh, you don't need design skills? Because <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a developer. I'm not a designer. I have a website. It's functional, but it's ugly. <laughs> so I don't have, like, I won't. I don't like having to try and design things and decide kind of what the flow of them should be if I don't have to. And that's kind of where a show command comes in. Now show command, it allows you to present a graphical interface to your users uh, for your, your scripts. It allows you to validate the input that they give you so that it, uh, just like when they are running, if they were to run your scripts manually, uh, it'll val like PowerShell won't let it run until they put in the correct details. It also allows you to execute your script. So once they fill out all the details, they click OK and it will run it. And then, so that's how we get kind of get information from the user to execute our script. But then, an important part of of it is also presenting to the user, and that's where OutGrid View comes in. And our grid view kind of gives you that, that view, like it's in the name, it's a grid view of the data, uh, but it can do more than that, like more than just present the data. It can allow, similar to Excel, it can allow them to sort the data. It can also allow them to filter the data. And uh, if you set it up properly, it can actually allow them to select parts of the data. And so those are kind of what's built in. And move something in Zoom here because I can't see. Um, but so it's built in, but we want to use it. And one of the main things to do is that you need to have functions uh, to use it. You can kind of give it script files, but it's 
it's really built around showing functions or uh, or commandlets to kind of give you the, the information. You also kind of need a launcher script. Uh, so what I use is a, a two file combination. I'll have my PowerShell file that will be named the same as the function. And then I have a, a CMD file that just launches PowerShell.exe uh, and uh, gives it that file name. And then it does things like no profile and sets your execution policy to bypass. So you don't run into, um, run into things where it decides for some reason that it wants to load your profile and your profile is trying to connect to Azure and takes three or four seconds. So you really don't want that to, to happen. Um, and then a few, few things is like, there's some out grid view tricks uh, that can help you out. There's, and this is kind of the getting data from the user or, and or waiting to, until the user has verified it. There's pass through, which by default will just take, allow the user to select object or select rows. And uh, when they click okay, it passes it back onto the pipeline for you to process in the same, it's, it's basically the same object as was passed into OutGrid view. There's also dash wait. If you want to pause your execution until after the user has looked at whatever they happen to be looking at, it will, uh, it'll, PowerShell will wait until the OutGrid view window closes. And then once it closes, it'll let you, it, you can carry on. Um, there's also output mode that you can give it. And you can give it uh, kind of three output modes. There's none, which is the default. It, um, it doesn't expect any output from out grid view. Then there's multiple, which is uh, like pass through where you can, you can select multiple options in it. There's also single. So you can ask your users to only give you, or you can prevent your users from giving you multiple uh, entries. They can, they're only allowed to select a few specific ones there. But OutGrid view by itself is not great. The title is the command that was executed with. So you can give it a title because uh, it's a lot more meaningful for a window to pop up that says, pick the files to be deleted or pick the user accounts to disable than it is to, put, to output um, dollar files pipe to where a dash object name equals uh, what have you. The user just doesn't doesn't know what the command means, and and plus, if you're the one using it, six months down the road, you're gonna have no idea what you wrote that for, anyways. And so that's kind of the um, overview of using OutGrid View and uh, Show Command. But as, as I heard Fred say a few weeks ago, and it's kind of stuck with me, this is PowerShell, not PowerPoint. And so I'm going to uh, kind of give you a demo of what I'm talking about with these things. So if I can switch over to my system here. So, so this is the, um, I'll show you the, the new phone uh, files is what I, what I have. This is, uh, one that I had created to create a new phone in our Cisco phone system. So this is a launcher script that I mentioned. Um, and this is one that I, um, it's a method I came up, I, I think I came up with, or maybe I read it online. I It's mine now. So, um, and basically we just call PowerShell.exe. We give it the execution policy of bypass. We tell it no profile. Um, and then this, this line or this part is the part that tells it to execute the file that contains the same uh, drive and path and the name of the file, uh, but with a PS1 extension. So this is new-phone.cmd. Uh, this will run new-phone.ps1. And then I meant to minimize this earlier. Um, then our PowerShell script is is that I use a function and then a part of the launcher script is that this invoke expression part. And uh, this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of an important part that took me a bit to, 
to figure out because show command by default will show you the command and it will run the command but inside of a script it doesn't actually run it it will only run it if you run it from the terminal um, and that's where the pass through on show command comes in is that we run show command we give it our function name and then we give it pass through and it will run or it will pass that back onto the pipeline. And in this case, we just invoke expression on it, which is maybe a good thing, maybe not a good thing, but um, it's kind of kind of the way you have to have to do it. And so that launcher script allows your your end users to uh, be able to uh, do something like because uh, if you if you just give them the PowerShell file and they double click on it, well it launches, in this case, it's launching Notepad. Your user doesn't want that. They don't want to have to right click and find how to run it with PowerShell. They want a file they can just double click on and it opens up for them. Um, and then it shows you um, the ones that are required, uh, just like, or this, so this is show command and uh, it asks you, in this case, we're asking for a few things. Uh, as well as there's, we have validate sets on our on our phone model uh, because at the when I wrote this we only had uh, three physical phones and one soft phone so we didn't need uh, we we knew what what they were um, as well as there were kind of two protocol options um, and then we have switch statements that uh, they just show as a checkbox. Um, and followed by your um, your uh, optional. Actually, it, I'm not 100% sure if this is. Uh, I think it shows the required, and then switches, and then optional. Um, I was going to say it was alphabetical, but I realize IVR is not after protocol. So, uh, as well, because this is a an advanced function, it has your common parameters that you can you can expand those and select those. Um, and then when you click OK, it will go through and it'll run the script. Um, and in the case of the script, we just had it output kind of everything that it was given. And then uh, I've asked it to kind of present files to be deleted by the user. Uh, and this is the... Uh, options where they like they can sort based on uh, the name maybe they want to sort based on length so that they can apparently the sort on length is a bad one because I just realized that it's doing alphanumeric uh, but it allows them to do that sort of thing they can add criteria in here and this one is using uh, multiple so they can select multiple files in this case, and then when they click OK, uh, I'm just having it output. And then this one is using, uh, no matter how much I try, if I hold down Shift and press up and down and uh, click on things, it won't actually let them. And this, is, so this is an example of the uh, output mode single. And then when they uh, select it, it outputs the one that was selected. Here and in this case, we pause at the end. Um, one one big caveat I, I mentioned that it all works from Windows Seven up to Windows Ten, or sorry, up to Windows Eleven. One thing I found recently, and I'm not I'm, this is either well, this is a Windows terminal slash um, Windows issue, but uh, I if you can set your default. Uh, terminal application, if you set it to terminal preview or or even just Windows terminal, when you run this, when you run your script, because it launches inside of that, there's a there's an issue where the PowerShell window appears behind it. Um, and but that happens even if you even if you're at the terminal and run it. So that is one caveat to be aware of that if you've specified, um, if you specified your default terminal pro application to be something other than console host, then you might 
your users might end up having to look around for, for the windows that are opened. So, um, so that's kind of a, a demo of it in action, but um, let's actually build, kind of build a function that will use these features. Um, and so I've just, I have this, my, my function file, and over here I've got the uh, CMD file, which is exactly the same as the new phone uh, CMD file, uh, just with a different name. And so in here, uh, I've created the, the base function, just takes in some parameters. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna create a new parameter uh, that we're gonna make, oops, if I can type, uh, and make it mandatory and we're gonna ask for extension. And then, uh, I had this out earlier. I'm gonna take in a parameter uh, that also is mandatory. And then uh, this one's gonna have a, geez. this one's gonna have a validate set. Uh, which is just going to have uh, Chaco, because I know that one's there, uh, Corinox.dev, because again, I know that's there. And I'm at dash materials. And this will be our repository. Uh, and then once I've got that set up, um, and if I were to save that now and execute it, uh, we will have, we have an extension that we can put in and the repository. But I mean, if I click okay, it doesn't do anything because it's just a base, very base script that takes in uh, some parameters. Uh, so we actually want to do something with those parameters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for the files uh, from get child item. And I'm going to ask for them from C code local slash repository. This is this is the typing part I wasn't sure if I was going to be in person to be able to do because I didn't have my keyboard, but here I have it and I can't type. Uh, we're going to recurse and we're also going to filter. And in this case, I'm going to filter on dollar extension. Yeah. Extension. Um, and that's going to get us all of our files. And then I'm going to ask it to this is i just realized what i was going to do is gonna yeah we'll do it live it's going to be bad or not but i'm gonna uh take the files and in this case i'm gonna select object and i'm gonna ask it for the name the full name and the length and the main the main reason for that is that uh, by default, it doesn't include the full name. And so uh, because we're recursive, it's not super great. And then I'm going to, let's try remove item and see what it does. No, actually that's <laughs> not gonna remove item just yet. We're going to uh, use out grid view. And uh, we're going to give it a title uh, select file to delete. And this is the part where I'm going to say, select the output uh, mode and I'm going to uh, choose a single so that uh, we're only able to delete a single file because um, I suspect deleting a lot of files is not, not what I actually wanted to do. But um, so now when we run it, Um, it asks us for what extension we want to give it. I'm going to choose uh, PowerPoint files and I'm going to choose Summit Materials 
uh, which is the uh, the repository on GitHub that is you, that houses all of the materials for Summit here. And so there's only apparently a few PowerPoint files uh, going back or uh, and whatnot. So I'm going to pick my uh, Git work tree one and uh, hit OK. And it didn't like that because because um, I didn't give it actually a full object. I had only given it part of an object. So um, I'll promote single a grid view. So the easiest way I'm going to work around that is I'm just going to say remove item say full name. Save that. Tab over to here, run it again. materials and again they if I if I hold down shift until I'm blue in the face it will only ever let me pick one uh, and so then I I hit okay on that uh, it has gone and if I come over here because I'm already in that repository and come in to get I think do I have to refresh there we go. So it shows that the file itself was actually deleted uh, from that. Uh, but I also purposely picked repositories, so I know I can just kind of undo that, restore that file. Um, and I said, so that's the, like, that's using output mode single. Uh, we can use output mode multi or multiple, uh, as I mentioned, that allows you to pick. Uh, a bunch, but if you're just going to use output mode multiple, then you might as well use pa pass through because uh, that is basically the same thing. Um, and as well for for uh, like debugging, you would debug or actually you can't quite debug it the same way you you normally would uh, your scripts because because we are invoking the expression on it. Uh, but before you ever do the show command, you can, like you could debug your script in a normal way. And then the show command is kind of what you give to your end users to, to run that with. Um, and so I'm gonna change that to S. And so if I tell it to run, the whole file um, and VS code has the same issue as uh, Windows terminal where that the files or the the windows have a have a habit of popping up behind the screen or behind the the uh, VS code window and in this case I'm going to pick PowerShell files uh, to be deleted from again that same one because I know where I'm in that. Um, and so in this case, because I had used pass through, I'm able to select kind of multiple. Um, I can filter it. Uh, and the filter works across uh, kind of all of them. So if I hit, if I put 758, it picks this one that has a length of 758. And if I put 2022, uh, it'll pick all the ones that are in the 2022 folders. And it'll allow me to uh, shift click on them. I'm gonna move this out so I get a whole bunch. So you can shift click just like you normally would in other things. And then you can control click for individuals. And if you opt to your users, like it, it also has a cancel button uh, so they can cancel it. And then uh, nothing ends up going back to the, uh, on the pipeline in that case. So in, in this instance, nothing else was removed because I click cancel. And 
whatnot. And so that's kind of the um, how to use show command and uh, and out grid view in order to make make scripts that your users will want to use and and can use. Uh, the one I haven't mentioned it, or I, I mentioned earlier is uh, dash weight. It appears that it's basically, um, it, it just waits. It doesn't actually send anything uh, through the pipeline. Uh, so if I choose to dash wait on that one, and we'll execute the script again. Uh, so now when I pick X, Summit Materials, um, the script itself is still, like it's still sitting here waiting for us, uh, but uh, but I don't actually get the OK and Cancel buttons on here. So it, that's the one you would want if you're just going to present, um, say at the end of, you, say you have a script that goes through and deletes a whole bunch of users that are, um, that have been, they left your company or whatever, um, and it's deleting the users, you can at the end present and say, here are the users that have been deleted, and they can look at, at the list. Um, they can select things in the list. And if they wanted, uh, this also include or allows copy and paste. Uh, so if I copy from there and I open a new file and I paste it in, uh, it'll give you kind of a tab separated list for that. So your users are able to uh, get get the data without without you having to kind of present anything or whatnot. And so I'll go back uh, to here. Um, that's kind of what I had for uh, demos and, and whatnot. Uh, were there any questions? And if you do have any questions, if I could get you to come up to the webcam, as I'm told that's where the microphone is. So I'm not, not here seeing any, any questions. So I'll, um, just kind of to to summarize, uh, to use this method, you it works really well with with functions. Uh, you can use them whether your your function is in a module or just in a script itself. Uh, it does require a little bit of a launcher script. One, I, like one to launch PowerShell.exe itself, as well as uh, the script to invoke uh, show command, and then. Uh, with the outgrid view, a uh, few of the tricks are is that you can use pass through. If you expect uh, the user to select something uh, or dash wait, if you want to just wait for them to, uh, to view the data. And then uh, if you only want to, if you want to limit how much they uh, are able to select, you would use output mode with single, uh, or you can use output mode with multiple, but as I mentioned, pass through is basically the same thing. Uh, but you definitely do want to give it a title so that it isn't just the command that is run because as I mentioned, your users likely aren't going to aren't going to know what that command line or that PowerShell line actually means or what what you're expecting from them. Um, a few resources uh, that I've in, included here is the there's the docs link for uh, outgrid view. Uh, I realized that I didn't include the uh, docs link to show command, but I'll put it in there before I uh, save the file or upload the file to, onto GitHub. Uh, there is also, as I mentioned, the show UI uh, module. It uh, one of the <laughs> One of the warnings about it is that it, it looks like it hasn't been updated in uh, about six years. So um, it's not, but, but then again, PowerShell, Windows PowerShell itself also hasn't been updated in several years. So um, another one that now that I'm thinking of it, I can't remember if I mentioned there's uh, graphical, 
the graphical tools module from Microsoft has an outgrid view that is cross-platform. Uh, it's currently, uh, they're not working on it right now because they're waiting for .NET MAUI uh, to be released, which depending on reports is coming out soon or not soon, because uh, initially it was supposed to come out in last November, if I recall correctly. Uh, but that would be one that you could uh, potentially look to for going forward, but that also uh, doesn't, that, that requires extra, um, extra software and prerequisites that you may not want to put on your end users computers. Um, if you're looking for ways to contact me, I am on Twitter as Corey Knox, on GitHub and GitLab as CoreBob. Most places I'm either one of those two or some variation of, of Corey Knox uh, or CoreBob. And my website is uh, coreynox.dev. I update it uh, semi-regularly. Every one to 3,000 business days, there'll be a new post on there. So, so thank you for uh, coming to my talk on using Windows PowerShell to create uh, scripts that your users will want to use.